I feel like I've been spending the whole morning with you guys looking at all your Instagrams and your website and That's really good. beautiful story. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. I don't know. Do you guys know me from two moms in the raw? Because you guys, yeah. So I was like, ah, oh, because we weren't allowed to do baked foods. Like we were very restricted, but yeah. you pretty much have our recipe and congratulations. Thanks. Um, hey, on nice. phenomenal. Um, and you look really beautiful. You look great. Are you guys at your mom's house still? <laughs> or are you finally in your own house? Oh, <laughs> we're in our own house. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good. <laughs> we moved out of mom's house. She kicked us we moved out. out of mom's house and kitchen. Um, so I'm in the beginning, I introduced myself. I'm outside on my deck, so I apologize. Yeah, for it looks that. very nice there. It looks sunny. That's oh, good. yeah. Well, hey, take a look. This is my, my view. Oh, my God. Are you That's, kidding you see the mountains? Me? Look at that. You see the mountains? That's yeah, amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, actually, that side is the beautiful, but I'm, I'm actually facing our, we have our chickens. You might hear Hank. He I likes to cock a doodle do a little bit. I love um, it. Yeah, very, we're very lucky. Um, yeah. So my name is Sherry Leidick. I am, uh, I was the founder of Two Moms in the Raw and we exited that company in 2016 and we started No Brainer Foods where we made keto creamers and instants. And um, 2019, we launched a Max Mallow, the first collagen marshmallow ever to hit the market. And it soon became 90% of our sales. So now we're sort of evolving into Max Sweets. We still have No Brainer products but we're leading with our, uh, with our hero. And um, I started all of this because I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. That's why I had raw foods, sprouted raw foods, which I do every day um, in addition to what I do with uh, Max Sweets. And, um, and that's my story. Uh, Jordan, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief here, but um, effectively I, I graduated in May of this past year. Crazy time to be a second semester senior for sure. Um, yeah. But effectively, fast forward, um, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. So I've been practicing a gluten free diet and through that have just become obsessed with the better for you CPG category. So saw Sherry when she won best product at NOSH and hit her up and convinced her to allow me to kind of get in on the day to day operation side of things. So I've been helping them run their e comm channel for the last couple of months. And I've been such a fan of Emmys. So this is Samantha and Ian, and you guys can, I would love you to introduce yourself. I mean, you know, if you go to your website, you see that you were working in the kitchen, just what inspired you to start your company. And literally, I think your trajectory was really fast. Like, so how did that happen? Like, how did you become a, it felt to me like a success overnight coming yeah. from the raw food world. So uh, well, some it's... days it doesn't feel like that, but <laughs> no, it never does, does it? From the outside, it does sometimes, That's you know, great. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, and we're very, we're very blessed. It's been going really well. And, yeah. um, you know, I have a similar story, I guess, to you guys, where it was really like a health problem that kind of pushed me in the direction of, you know, natural food um, and healthier food and gluten-free and dairy-free, plant-based, stuff like that. But um, when I was 17 years old, um, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Um, and prior to that, I had a very standard American diet. I was like fast food five days a week, um, <laughs> pretty reckless lifestyle, um, dropped out of high school, you know, when I was 16 or 17 years old, um, and really was on a path of destruction, I guess. <laughs> and so, yeah, self-destruction, <laughs> self exactly. Too, too much McDonald's and Subway and things like that. But um, I got really, really sick when I was about 17 years old. And um, at first I tried, you know, Western medicine, taking drugs and things like that to, you know, help me feel better. And it really didn't work. And so at the time, you know, my dad and one of his girlfriends and also my mom was like, hey, maybe we should look at your diet. You know, maybe not so much pizza and cheeseburgers and maybe try cutting out dairy and gluten and things like that, which, I mean, that was like the last thing that I wanted to do personally. Um, but to be honest with you, when I finally bit the bullet and I started cutting some of that stuff out of my diet, all the processed food, all the junk, and really focus on like whole plant-based and gluten-free, I mean, I noticed a difference like overnight. So was it a GI issue or yeah. was it yep. more of that? Yeah. That's yep. what happens. It's such a link, right? Such a link. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of what pushed me into, you know, natural foods, I guess. Um, 
And I personally never thought that I would get into the business of natural foods. Um, I am a graphic designer and I also um, was DJing at the time. Oh, cool. Uh, New York. And that was like, still is my passion and everything, but um, this just kind of naturally evolved and maybe yeah. you want to give a little background on. Yourself. Yeah. And so, um, well, prior to Ian and I even meeting, um, I basically came to health mostly because I grew up as a dancer. And um, so just through that kind of active lifestyle, I was kind of always taught to take care of your body. And so I remember when I was in college, I was very experimental. Like I, that's when I started playing with raw foods and that was like before it became kind of cool. Yeah. And so literally everyone thought that I was absolutely insane. Cause I was like sprouting things and like dehydrating things and all that. And so actually when I, so I graduated from Ithaca college and the summer after that, I met Ian for the first time. And one of the things that really brought us together was um, just this love of really healthy, simple foods. And one night he taught me how to make this coconut cookie recipe that he had made really just to have as a treat for himself. And together we realized that there really wasn't anything like this available on the market. And, you know, cause especially back then, like the variety that we have now, it's amazing. Um, yeah. So, um, so we decided just together to start this little company, um, you know, in his mom's house. And we literally just went door to door um, locally. And we were vendors at our local farmer's market for a few years and like have truly grown the business by um, doing, you know, taking every step and learning the industry ourselves. Yeah, we are amazing. Like how soon after did you land Whole Foods? Oh, maybe like two years. Years. yeah probably two or three years something like that in the beginning honestly we were like hey this is really a great product and it tastes really good and like our local community would love this like that was our whole thing was like oh new york i'm sorry new york is your local community no like Up Ithaca, upstate. like upstate new york, oh, well, upstate really new york which is like not even new york I like just hyper localized <laughs> yeah we were thinking like let's be a farmer's market vendor and have fun for the summer and then we'll figure out what the rest we're going to what we're going to do with yeah, our lives we didn't much. know about the, we didn't even know there was an industry no, you know it was just nothing. truly like a passion project to yeah. something that was really fun for us to do together and then you know we saw though that people really loved this product and it was really special because yes it was gluten-free and plant-based and organic and all these things very simple ingredients but Mm -hmm. everyone really liked it. It wasn't just people who with dietary restrictions. So right. was, so that's when we realized mm -hmm. that we had something special and we started looking at, we eventually had a, another relative's basement certified so we could have a little <laughs> more space and started, we took a trip down to New York City and literally just went door to door to all those amazing independent health food stores. And then mm -hmm. those accounts really, people, they would reorder like crazy. And so, yeah. um, it really was, you know, we did not have the strategy, you know, in place that a lot no. of people do when they launch. Um, yeah. But we really allowed the demand to draw us forward and helped us like learn. Um, so did you, products. so you probably self-funded, self-funded. Was there a time when you did um, outside funding? We have not taken mm -hmm. any outside funding to date. That's Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Really nice. Thanks. <laughs> it's been, I know we We're have pretty a old school, I guess. I guess yeah, I know. Some people no, we, were, we were that way for eight or nine years. It was literally nine years in. And then we decided, which wasn't a, the right decision for us. We should have right. not have, but we did. And um, it's honestly not something we're opposed to at all, but just, we haven't had to because the business business has been profitable almost mm -hmm. every single year that we've been in. Um, in business. Yeah. Jordan, I'm sure you have some questions when you hear that. <laughs> well, well, for, for sure. Well, but before I get into that, I mean, I, I was just personally curious, like kind of how, were, were you teaching people like why they should be eating coconut as a part of a cookie? I feel like you guys were one of the first people to kind of like really introduce that ingredient as like a, mm -hmm. you can and should be eating this. Yeah. Right. I can't say that we were teaching. We didn't come from that perspective, yeah. but we just were featuring it and just saw how many people like love coconut there are definitely people who don't love coconut right um but but the majority of people <laughs> do yeah um so it was just um a focus for us yeah. did, you did, you love it? did you make it yourself or did you co-pack 
So we've always mm -hmm. manufactured ourselves. We've have, had co-packers do small runs um, and we also mm -hmm. have a product line that's made with a co-packer today. Um, but we've always done the majority of it in-house. Oh, um, that's so great. So you do contact so, for certain. Yeah. yeah, we have like a blended model. We do, we do. I mean, majority, probably like 90% of our manufacturing in-house right now. Wait, wait, where is this? Where is it done? In Ithaca, New York. Mm -hmm. We're still there. We're yeah, still here. yeah, we're still here. We actually, uh, we closed on a new facility um, last awesome. October and did renovations like through the beginning of the pandemic, which is kind of crazy. Um, so we opened up like a 20... 20,000 square foot manufacturing facility. In the wow. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Which how, is how, did you guys kinda, how did you figure that out that you wanted to make it in-house versus co-pack? And yeah. like, is there a point, is there a point, like a threshold that you guys are going to be like, okay, well, this is the time that we're going to move or I guess you guys just bought a new facility. So I probably, yeah, we're thing. pretty committed to doing it. You know, we, yeah. because we have had a blended approach, we have had the experience in both sides. And I really mm -hmm. don't think that there's one answer for everyone, you know, whether mm -hmm. to cope, use a co-packer or not. Um, but in using co-packers, we really saw how good we were at making our product. Um, mm -hmm. We also have an amazing workforce here. Manufacturing has it's allowed us to That's provide great. jobs, yeah, to mm -hmm. refugees in our community and we're a living mm -hmm. wage employer. So, um, cause I know that like finding people to work in manufacturing facilities can be a really challenging thing, but it's not for us. Mm -hmm. So that's been a really big yeah. part of why we've been able to yeah. continue. Yeah, it's been definitely a big benefit for sure to be off, uh, able to offer good jobs in the community and stuff, you know? No, for sure. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm curious, could you w walk us through the, the whole Starbucks situation? And I guess like when in your life cycle that happened and I'm sure you and Sherry can trade back and forth because they were also in Starbucks locations. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were everyone for about four years. I think you came in after though. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and let's, we launched, yeah. So we launched in the beginning of 2017 yep. Um, yep. into almost 12,000 12, mm -hmm. Starbucks locations. And that I really, I made a connection with a buyer from there at a trade show and we actually have this amazing conversation and she had her badge flipped. So I didn't even know who she was, but we just like connected really well. And she was so interested in our story and just sort of like our why, you know? And then at the end of the conversation, she said that she was a buyer from Starbucks and she'd be really interested in, you know, testing our product. So we, you know, lots of back and forth, lots of samples, like many months later, we ended up doing a regional test with them and our product did really well. And then we then launched um, nationwide um, and in Canada with them in 2017. So that, they put us on the map for sure. And you know how we met them was Howard Schultz actually came to our booth at Expo West. Oh my nice. God. My husband, no, but my husband was so like, I did, wasn't giving any samples really, you know, we were so scrappy. And they walked away and he's like, okay, if I'm going to send, give my samples to somebody, he literally ran after them and said, here, yeah. take some samples <laughs> and throw our granola bars. And which is interesting though, I thought our truffles should have been in our, in Starbucks, but they chose our granola bars yeah. and it was my yeah. story. So there were about six companies that they chose and mine had the story. So it was really, it was a beautiful what they did. Um, yeah. we'd, love, we'd love to discuss um, our marshmallows are an amazing coffee condiment. So I, but it's not the same people anymore. So any, any of the people we yeah. know. Yes, it's not the same people for us either. Um, yeah. But we had, and we're not in Starbucks anymore, but we yeah. had a really awesome run with them. Listen, they were great to work with. They really were. Yeah. yeah I funny, it's they, only put, like, they were more like a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx where they pick like six SKUs at a time. You know, well, I, was, I was just going to say, I feel like that's part of like what probably makes it great for an emerging brand. Like, I feel like I'm, almost every single time I'm going into a coffee shop, whether it's Starbucks or whether it's not, like I'm always looking to get something oh, yeah. to accommodate my- Everybody face. goes to Starbucks, Jordan. Exactly. Like everyone knew about us at Starbucks. And what I was about to say was that they don't pick, they don't, they don't order that many per store, but they have so many stores that it ends up being like a million plus dollar account. I mean, it's- Big it was, account for sure. Yeah, it was great. It was like a springboard for a lot of other distribution. Oh yeah, stuff. congratulations. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. yeah, sometimes the angels are just watching over, you know, that's what happened with two moms for sure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. just right place, right time, I guess. 
It is a great place, a great time. And you have a, you know, and you're really lucky now that you've been so established and then COVID hits is what I've been talking with brands about is that you already have the, for the foot traffic. So you're already showing up digitally on Instacart. I noticed on your website and I, you know, and just showing up when people are shopping at Whole Foods, a newer brand, let's say like ours, who we're really controlling our distribution. We're, we really want to blow up our DTC. So every distribution channel we have like Walmart or CVS is we're going direct. Yeah. So we don't have to be in Kehi or Whole Foods, uh, Unify right now. But if we were to during the COVID time, that's hard for people to find you, right? Because people, we're not a destination yet because people are just learning about us. Yeah. So, uh, you know, totally. so have, what did you think? Like did, when, when COVID hit, did you see brick and mortar sales fall? Did you see your online sales go up? Like what, what happened there? Yeah. yeah, we've seen like, we've seen all of it. It's, I mean, it's been a roller coaster, I think for us as, as it has been for a lot of people. So like, you know, where um, our brick and mortar stuff maybe took a little bit of dip, our online stuff like quadruple, you know? That's so great. Um, and then is sort of like vice versa. So it's just been kind of like riding the wave. Yeah, um, we definitely did see the impact of just like reduced store traffic. And also mm -hmm. we had a lot of out of stocks, just like the distribution was so low, oh, like backed up with right. essentials, you know, like toilet paper. Yes, they cake, picked, so. they picked, I tried to fight that and we are yeah. honest. You know, for know. people like us who heal with food. Um, yeah, so we yeah. definitely like saw the impacts of that. But I mean, we've been so lucky really in the end, like, you know, we've to get through all of it and to even move into our new facility. You yeah. know, we haven't made any layoffs or anything like that. Oh, that's so, great. Um, yeah. We're getting through it and we're really well positioned for a lot of growth for 2021. So are you, are you meeting your revenue goals and exactly where you need to be? Yeah, yeah, we've, I mean, we've like reforecasted our budget every four weeks, you know, <laughs> so it's just constantly changing. It's constantly moving target. Um, but, you know, I think this year, probably a lot, how a lot of people are thinking about is, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a different kind of year. Yeah, it's just, it is reality, but at the same time, it's not, you know. Um, oh, I know. This I think people that's what your, one of your Instagram about. posts was about that. I loved it. Yeah. I I was gonna say, on on the Instagram idea, I feel like your guys' brand is, is like the it's effectively synonymous with just like wholesomeness. And like I, I wanted to <laughs> you can take that with it however you want, but um I, I'm curious like kind of how you guys have um begun to or were thinking about influencers. And I know I mentioned Rachel Mansfield in my email to you guys. She's like is awesome, but I'm curious like kind of how you have made those organic partnerships. You know, I mean, well, Rachel, as an example, I remember she reached out to me in probably like, tw I can't remember when she first kind of went out on her own, but she sent me an email and was like doing recipe development for people, just kind of like one-off recipes. And so she was like just getting started. So we've been connected for a really long time. And I think we did like one give, it was like the first time I ever paid anyone to do anything. I think I did a giveaway with her or something. And, um, you know, we have a very small group of influencers that we work with for now. That is something that I really want to see us grow. Um, but it's always been really important for me to have a, a personal connection with anyone that we're working with, because I know that there's a lot of um, agencies out there that are maybe representing brands. And I just don't feel like the influencers get to know the, the brand truly, like, you know, from like you do when you meet someone from the company. So that's been really important. Um, but in general, it has been pretty small, but growing soon. Would you be willing to do a giveaway with us, even though we're about the no sugar, but I think it would be a nice compliment for- Yeah, I can connect you with um, Emily and my team who does all of that. That would be great. Okay, after yeah. this, I'll, I'll reach out to you and then we can okay. do something. I would cool. love to do a giveaway with you guys. Cool. Awesome, and and we try we try to keep these short and sweet. So we'll yeah. we'll uh, we'll wrap up here, but ask our final question. Um, so to both of you, um, if you had an extra hour in each day, where would you spend it, and why would you do so? Well, that's easy on the couch napping because <laughs> naps are not essential enough for people. <laughs> I feel like we all need so to take fair. naps, you know. Yeah. Um, but that would probably be for me. I think if it was an hour every day, it would be something to reset my mind. Hmm. And napping is a place where I can do that. <laughs> I'm right with you on the couch. Okay. I'm, I'm not as much of a napper. But wait, are you talking more like 
anything and in any anything. area anything and how yeah. and why and what, what and why whatever if you had that extra hour i think that i would just something that really resets me is to just get in line with like what my goals really are, whether it's for the week or for the day. And so, and I don't think I spend enough time just kind of reevaluating, you know? So if I have, um, maybe there's a to-do list, but it's like, what do I really want to achieve this week? And maybe it is even like some more <laughs> recharge time, but just to like spend more time, like evaluating where I'm at. Cause I find that I can get into things and then I just get swept away but I think that time to just take a step back and evaluate would be good for me. Yeah, yeah it's great. Cool. Awesome. Well, th just wanted to say thank you so much again for taking the time. As always, I totally agree with you, Samantha, just in terms of like having face-to-face -face conversations, just meeting the people behind the brands is something that I hope people still continue to do, but like one of my favorite things about this category, so. Well, that's why we're doing it, Jordan. I mean, totally. we are. And I wish we had done, I wish I had done this over the years. So thank you for giving us time. I feel recharged just spending a uh, half hour with you guys. So thank awesome. you. This is really Same. nice. Thanks guys. So if we could just really do nice. this every day, would that be okay? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll awesome. All, All right. right. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya.